Welcome to the channel. Building overseas doesn't have to be a nightmare. My goal is to help you make that dream a reality. I spread weekly tips on the process of building that dream home and the lifestyle it brings. So check out my videos, subscribe and share. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning somewhere, good evening. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate you guys taking the time. Let me know if you can hear me. And we can, we started a little bit early today. Uh, I have to take care of something in about an hour and a half. So the goal is to wrap up everything with the questions that you have, and then we'll take it from there, okay? Um, so, Nana, yeah. Nanaya, let me know if the sound is good. I appreciate you taking the time to join me. I'll, I'll be looking forward for some questions about your build. Um, Asaberi Osu, thank you. Thank you for joining me here. Fine evening as well. Bye, love, Nanaya. Anyway, so if you guys have been uh, listening in, seeing something, a flood, 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 flood. In Ghana, in Accra, certain places, Masi, um, uh, was no joke. It's still happening now, and so we're gonna we're gonna share. I'm gonna share with you some of some some of the things we can do to mitigate some of these flood issues. Fortunately for me, the Kaswa house was fine. Um, I didn't have any water issues, but I know some people that did. Sun is okay. I know some people also that had some leakages as well, because I mean this flooding was a, it was a lot of water within 24 hours, coupled that with um, lack of um, proper irrigation systems, and some of our behaviors uh, is it, just leads to catastrophe like something like this. Okay. So my my mindset is that um, you you only do what you can control, which is how you build um, uh, to some extent. Uh, but I can control whether the irrigation system is done uh, in terms in terms of on a systematic level. I can control that. Um, so I'll just take care of my build and try to mitigate some of these things. All right, all right. So I didn't obviously I didn't want to show you some videos of floodings. I mean, I think you guys have seen them. So a lot of places got flooded. You know, places that are unusual uh, actually got flooded this time. So um global warming, people's behavior, lack of leadership, whatever, right? All part of it. Now, so that is why I always say this: how you build is important. How you build is very, very important. You know, you are not that helpless, as it may seem. It matters. Um, you know, some people have the view that it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Uh, some of us think that it matters how you build. The knowledge you put in, the expertise are important. The detail are important. The foresight, the foresight are important. The condition, the soil you build in, the location you build in. It's very, all these things are very, very important. You just don't go by line and then start putting a structure over there, okay? Uh, you have to look at a bunch of stuff. So African Genius, thank you from Seattle. Yeah, I was in Seattle, what is it, six years ago. Uh, it was fun. I was in downtown. And then I went to where the seafood is, right? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, anyway. So one of the things I want us to factor in is this, right? Um, the number one way to deal with uh, flooding, the number one way, so everybody agrees with this, is elevation. Elevation is your friend, right? Elevation, uh, Salif, thank you for joining me. Elevation is your friend, okay? Use elevation. So if you're on the hill, use that hill. Don't don't destroy the hill. Um, if we believe in race foundation. I, I listen. I believe that. You know, I learned a lot from this flooding because the new site, 
I sent some guys, uh, one of my friends, to go take a picture right after the day that, you know, it rained for 24 hours. And I could see on the ground, I could see some areas were fine. Some areas had a little bit of uh, saturation on the ground. So I am glad I'm able to see that. So then when I'm doing, the, the, the house is already elevated, but when I'm doing my sloping and then when I'm doing a way to channel the water out, um, you know, I can I can tackle those problematic areas and that kind of stuff. So sometimes you build in the summer, you buy the land during the uh, dry season and you build, you do a lower foundation or shallow foundation then all of a sudden, you know, comes May, June, July, July, and then, you know, you're experiencing all this stuff. So it's very, very important, please. You know, it's like because some places, uh, depending on the location they are, you know, they will have to really demo their house and, and raise that thing up because there's no way the flood is not going to be there, okay? Um, and so... If, Yes, there was a big one in Germany too as well. It was huge um, uh, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it, it is happening in a lot in, in a lot of places, even in the developed developed countries. Uh, but sometimes they might have flood insurance. There's no flood insurance in Ghana, right? And so, if you have the um, yeah, the seafood market. Yes, 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 yes. Seafood market. Yep, yep. I bought some salmon over there. It's awesome. Um, yeah. So, so we don't have flood insurance in Ghana. As, as far as I know, we don't. Uh, if somebody is aware, let me know, uh, because they they will get out of business. So, so there's things that we can do. You know, when we build, there's a bunch of things that we can do. Okay. Uh, Galena, thank you for joining. So. Number one, elevation for flood flood prevention, elevation, elevation. I'm just telling you guys, elevation. I don't even care who's building for you. Elev you it is, and I don't care you think unless you are like on a hill, hill, right? If you're on sea level, you're on sea level, elevation. Ghana is most most of the territories in Ghana are very flat, so chances are you're gonna be on you know sea level or slightly above sea level but if you're in Accra definitely going to be sea level so we have to really really elevate these homes we have to minimum two and a half three feet uh for ideal and you can do some stairs designs to to uh to do that so that is one elevation so that's the most important thing and two we also have to start thinking about installation of you know foundation vent or some pump for some areas because you got to be able to pump the water from the compound away from the house. Some of us have to start looking at that option uh, because the worst thing is like the water comes in there and it stays there and it's not draining properly, right? Then it start seeping into the places around. So we want to get the water out, right? So sometimes the water is coming from not, not overflow from some, you know, gutter or some, some place. It's actually the rain, the rain from the sky coming down and and the, and the ground is saturated, okay? So we got to do that. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Hope all is well. Another thing too, that's what we talk about. So number one is elevation. So we're talking about flood control now. Elevation, get a way to channel the water out of the house, right? Pump it out somehow. Number three is what we talk about, applying of some coating, the DPC, uh, damp proof membrane, damp proof course, all these things become relevant. All the stuff that I've been advocating, preaching about it becomes relevant because in this rainy season, a lot of people are paying a price. And sometimes they just, they happen to build at the wrong neighborhood uh, in which people's um, ignorant behavior is leading to flooding their own house. So you have that kind of stuff. Okay, thanks for joining us, Nanaya. Um, Martins, appreciate it. I hope everything is good. Okay, so elevation one, find a way to get the water out of the compound. Sealant, right? Coating, damp, uh, DPC, uh, damp proof co coating or damp proof course, damp proof memory. And there's a bunch of stuff, like Dr. Fix it. There's a bunch of stuff. So, and one thing, I am, uh, so I'm in the process of doing my electrical because of the rain. 
uh, the flooding issue. I was thinking about it, and I did some research on this thing, but and it's actually recommended is that raise all your electrical outlet and switches. Raise them. Usually in the West, in the U.S., uh, the outlets, you know, when you go to the room, it's about a foot from the ground, right? So you have a foot from the ground. So raise it, right? So raise the ones that you raise your, your light, your lighting system that is on a fence wall. Do three feet. Put it up there so it, it, the flood doesn't go into the uh, the electrical system. So raise that. Um, I know some of them come with um, kind of like a what a what a proof um, cover, whatever. But rain, if air is going in, rain is going in, right? Uh, water is going going in. So raise that. So what I'm going to do even for myself too is like I'm going to raise all my electrical switches and outlet in the house, especially at the main floor, is going to be two and a half feet. So two and a half feet, I'm factoring all my floor work. So if you're doing tiles and all those things from there, so give yourself about four inches and then to, um, you know, add four inches to the two and a half. And then that will be able, hopefully, right? So if some crazy things happens and the water comes into the house, then you don't have water into your electrical outlet and switches. So that's a good point. Uh, if we haven't done that, that's something we can incorporate into, into that. So there's a question, okay? Appropriate foundation elevation. I would say anything, anything above three, I would say you are safe. Anything above three, you are safe, right? Most people don't do it. Um, I don't know why. Uh, because sometimes uh, when it's not in the design, uh, let's say the design doesn't call for staircase, uh, like uh, maybe two or three steps. So people just go flat. Uh, I've seen some like three inches of the ground. I don't know why, uh, because rainy season in Ghana is no joke, you know, uh, and stuff like that. So I would say, you know, three, pay the money now. You know, yes, it's going to cost you a little bit in terms of filling, and all those things, but but to me, it's like once you start having flooding issues, I mean, you can't leave these houses off the ground, right? It's not you can't put them on stilt and stuff like that. So raise everything. Uh, I say three feet minimum, four ideal, uh, and stuff like that. So that would be the foundation. So when we do project for people, we do it. You know, we say, listen, we put that into the code. So listen, we want you not to have flooding issue because somebody, you know, upstream was filling the gutters with trash or the MP said they were going to come fix some gutter. They never did. Now you are in your house and you have all this water pouring, you know, destroying the quality of life, destroying your furniture, bringing mold, algae, and all kinds of stuff. Nobody should live like that, right? 2022, 21st century, we should be doing a little bit, little bit things better. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be building like the 80s, the 90s. You know, we should be building something that is coherent. Um, something to mitigate against some of the challenges. Chances are global warming is there, flooding is going to happen, uh, much stronger and stuff like that. So we build for the future. Okay. So three, minimum three, um, and stuff like that. I do, I do four. Okay. Yeah. So raise electrical systems. Yeah. Yeah. Got to do that. It's very important. I am doing that myself. Um, and even if, if your electrician has already done the plumbing and all that stuff, they haven't put a wires in, you know, move it up. Tell them to move it up, you know, a little bit. It helps. Uh, it really, really helps. Okay. Another thing too we can do, right, is that uh, before the rainy season, we need to check our valves. We need to check our pipes. We need to make sure, um, you know, it's not clogged. We need to, if if you have a gutter in front of you, I do that at a Kasua house all the time. My gutters are always clean. I take, I take, I remove my own. Uh, trash from the gutters. I do that. I take away, you know, the plastic, uh, you know, water. Um, we call them like, uh, what is it? Um, you know, pure water, which is like a disposable, you know, water that people drink. It you just leave it everywhere. I I take out that. I remove the sand. I do that. I check. I check my gutter system. Make sure if I need to seal some of them or replace them because the rainy season. So I do that. And so maintenance, right? I will someday I'll talk about I'll share about the maintenance. You know, so it's not cheap. The bigger the house, the more money you're gonna pay for maintenance. So make sure 
all those things, your pipes and everything, you know, is good. You may even have to talk to some neighbors who maybe, you know, they, they've had collected some garbage and all that stuff. So um, it's very, very important. So, so do that. Then another uh, option you can add to is the slope, right? The elevations, no, not the elevations, but, but the sloping, right? Uh, the landscaping sloping, preferably, you know, it's like it slope well that the water is moving away from the house and the water can come in, but it has to be able to exit somehow, right? So um, it's very, very important. Treat your foundation walls. I Like I'm going to, you know, like I learned a lot from this rainfall. I learned a lot. So I'm going to even double up on my dump proof courses. So I'm going to do another one again uh, before I do I do plaster. I'm going to enrich my cement ratios. I'm going to do all my fence wall with uh, dump proof course, both inside and outside. Uh, I'm trying to minimize uh, a bunch of stuff because I don't want water issues. Okay, so slope it well. Uh, and usually, so think about it. If your whole house is sloped in one unit direction and it rains heavily, so the question becomes how much water can dissipate if, let's say, if all the water from the accumulate on the compound is going to the back of the house or going to the front of the house, the question is that uh, it's going to take, at the rate it rained the other day, it's going to take a while for all the water to get out of the house. So usually when you slope, you, you want to have... Uh, in a multi-directional, right? So the front and the back, if you have a garden and stuff like that, so so that you know the water has places places to uh, to exit, right? So it's one of those things that um, you know you can add into that. The problematic of we doing a lot of concrete on our landscaping becomes detriment to us because the water sits out there, the water cannot dissipate through the ground uh, at least quickly. And so then it's collecting and then, you know, it becomes a problem. So that is why I advocate, let's have some trees, let's have some um, some soil, some grass, and all those things, that, you know, the soil can absorb uh, at a quicker rate than the concrete, having all the water in the concrete. So this is a bunch of stuff that we can, uh, you know, add and, and help in making sure that if the water comes in, it exit. Um, what do you mean by raised electrical system? Can you please elaborate? Yes. Yeah, so what I mean by electrical system, so I, I'll, I'll go from external, I'll come internal. External mean everything outside the house. You know, usually on the fence wall, you have your lights, right? Uh, you have a light um, electrically wired uh, around the fence. So bring them up. Usually they are very low. It's about... Um, a foot and a half to two feet. Bring them about three feet. So bring those out so to avoid flooding. So bring everything up. Then in the house or even in the porch, you know, sometimes you have electrical outlet that you can plug stuff in. Maybe you're listening to music. Those things are tends to be really low to the ground. Bring them up two and a half feet, three feet. And the first floor or the ground floor, the ground floor, first floor can mean a lot of things. So the ground floor or the lower level, uh, if it's a bungalow, then that is the only floor. If it's multiple unit, then that's the ground level. Make sure your outlet that you plug stuff in are up about two and a half feet from the ground, right? From the ground. So if water should come in, because we've seen the videos, right? Water has come into the house and the water is like two and a half feet buried, uh, you know, all the... Uh, electrical switches and outlets are already buried underneath water. So we are trying to not, you know, change that. So that's what I mean by elevate, raise your electrical systems. Don't put everything on the ground. So that means if you have solar stuff, raise it off the ground. Uh, if you have your batteries and stuff like that, uh, raise things off the ground. Don't put anything of value that the land commission did. I'll come back to them. Don't put anything of value in uh, on the on the ground level, on the floor or below two feet because it could it could flat right. It could rain so much like it happened because uh, it rained twenty four hours straight, and it can get flooded. So. 
So what about yeah, foundation settling? So that is so this is a very important question. That is why you look at the soil composition, right? You know, the you do your soil your soil composition. Is it clay? Is it a mixture of clay, sand, uh, you know, stones and all those things are important. You do your compaction. So the beauty thing though is like usually even if the road, the future road is constructed, at most they'll ever go, at most they'll ever go is maybe a foot and a half from the from the ground level, right? So this is what this is this is how that when you do and then usually if it's um a you know foot and a half, I think they'll probably go less. There'll be gutters, right? The gutters will be sloped a little bit in. And so on your side of the gutters you can put another wall, two feet wall. So you make sure the water that is overflowing from the street goes into the gutter. But then your house is still elevated, right? And so there's a bunch of stuff, right? There's a, there's a bunch of stuff um, that you can tackle this thing so you know that water coming in and water is being distributed at exit point uh, whether from the side because the house is basically four components, right? The back, the front, and the two sides, right? That's all you got. So the front, uh, is the front going to be sloped? That is going underneath the gate to the gutter. Sometimes you don't have a gutter. Is the Is the back? going to uh go to you know exit maybe sometimes it's not an option because there's a neighbor behind you so so there's a bunch of stuff that requires decision on the ground to see how you can you can do uh, your sloping but ground will settle a little bit but if if you factor in and you've built well with the right pillars that's why we advocate the right pillars column size the ratio of cement and everything the settling is not that much you know, we, we're not talking about settling in foot. You know, we, if it moves, maybe, what is it? Quarter of an inch or something like that. Um, so, so it's a, a few factors that you, you can you can look at to do that. Okay. But being important, thank, thanks for joining us. Right. Um, another thing, too, is um, when you do your downsprout, so when you do your gutters and you're running things from the, from the roof, roofing down, make sure your downsprout is away from the house. Uh, what I did with a casual one is I ran it all the way down and then I went underground, I put a PVC pipe and I ran to the back because I, I made my own gutter over there and, and, and I did that. And so you want to get water from the house, away from the house. Um, so the dump proofing and all those things, let's not skim on that. It's very, very important, right? Mold, uh, and then listen, man, is you know, the there's the certain places you spend the money. Like like I don't care if somebody wants to put money in the luxury furniture, like I don't care about that stuff. I'd rather put the money into the, the structural component to make sure my cement ratio is rich, my dump proof cost is sound. So I'm not getting water, you know, the paint is now absorbing the right paint. I'd rather put the money over the furniture. You know, even if I get some average furniture now, it's going to change five years from now. I wouldn't matter. But if you start having water problems, um, you have to treat for the water problems. Don't wait to see the water. Because if you wait till you see the water problems, it, there's, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? So my attitude is that let's take care of it right away. That's where the money should go, right? You know, take care of those things. Elevate the house, obviously. You know, get a way to get the water out. Don't the dump proof cause your dump proof membrane. I know some bidders will be like, "Oh, you know, this is dry as heck." You never know, man. You never know. Take care of them. Elevate your outlets and switches. Make sure your vents, your pipes are not clogged, um, and all those things. Check your gutters, um, and and then. The, you know, you should be, you know, able to uh, get the lawn, get some lawn care, some trees, some soil. You know, we don't have to do concrete from corner to corner. Um, you know, it's like, um, it's, it's just a few little things, few little things that we can do um, that it can help us. Um, not not uh, because I feel, I feel really bad for a lot of people. It's like, um, I mean, the, this rainforest was just one of the heaviest heaviest I've seen in a long time. So, um, and it's still, it's still raining, right? So uh, we, we have to do it. 
Um, you know, we have to take care of things, you know, by ourselves anyway. Okay. So let me know if you have any more questions on that. Um, you know, it's, it's flat is, <laughs> flat is, is going to happen, right? It is going to happen. Um, and so uh, we, we just, we just got to be, you know, smart a little bit and, um, and think outside the box, be a little bit creative, how we can, you know, we can do this. Now the question sometimes becomes, Tony, you know, my house is already built, um, but how am I going to, you know, I, obviously it's hard to elevate this kind of, it's not like you can, you can lift them up and put them on new pillars and stuff like that. So, so then that, that becomes all the other things, right? Uh, the sloping, and, you know, and all those things and, and making sure that, you know, neighbors are not, um, are not, uh, you know, making the problem worse. So I have, um, so granted I don't stay there. Um, so I have a caretaker um, that take care, take care of that for me. I also have a cleaning regiment. Um, man, it's cleaning regiment of, you know, monthly. And then before I go, I also have cleaners come in there, you know, just do laundry, you know, for all the sheets. Cause you know, dust does okay. The pillows and, you know, ventilate the rooms and, um, you know, make sure everything is good. Yes. But if you, you need that ventilation or mold is going to build in, into your clothes. Is going to happen. Um, so ventilation is really, really uh, important. Um, the challenge becomes, though, if, for example, you say your, uh, your your caretaker leaves. You know, you have a boys' quarters, and you have, you know, you've closed your main house. You got a keys here. Then it's very difficult to ventilate because sometimes rain, uh, rain will come in, dust will also come in. Um, and I'm thinking about some ideas of how, you know, because the trade-off, um, if you open the windows, air will come in and dust will come in. So I'm thinking about some ideas to prevent the dust or minimize the dust. So I'm running some things in my head that I would like to incorporate on the second build um, to to see how we can, we can get air in and then keep the dust out. Yes, but ventilation is important. Other than that, you know, you're gonna have that smell, and it's gonna have uh, some mold build up into, especially if you have like um, white linen stuff like that. Right. So, any thoughts on what to be aware? <laughs> so, somebody called me. Uh, uh, somebody texted me from your friend from UK. It was like, hey, you heard about the land commission stuff, uh, people were getting flooded. And I've not heard about it that time. So I make a I make a call. It's true. Okay. It's true. Um, but this is what they told me. They said everything is backed up. That is what they said. Okay. Um, they said everything, whether I believe it or not. I, I to me, it amazes me how the flood will get into the paperwork anyway. When they have second floors, they could store these things on the second floor. But some of the papers got flooded. And they were destroyed. Okay? They were destroyed. And unfortunately, these are the, some of the stuff that we, you know, we got to deal with. Um, so... I don't know if they have backup, then maybe they can regenerate those documents. But if you don't have backup, I don't know. We were only going to find out when. So I would say that if you are still registering your stuff to Land Commission Accra Central, you just have to uh, go there and push it through and try to make sure that you are not one of the victims. I have document over there. I could be one of them. So. It's, it's crazy, uh, but it did flood it. Yes, some paperwork got damaged, you know, by confirmed by reliable sources. It's been damaged. Um, so, um, and also, too, the other things like the Achimota stuff, too. If you guys have been selling everything, man. 
is that Chumata stuff is also true. It's true. They saw the damn thing. Okay? You know, so it is our job to look out for our own interest, put ourselves in a situation regardless of what administration, who's running the country, who's not running the country, it doesn't affect you. And that is my approach towards Ghana. Um, because there's certain things that I know it would never get done. I mean, I'll put my life on it. But they, they, it's not going to get done. And so I don't wait for anybody to do anything. It makes it more frustrating. It makes it more costly for us to, do, those of us that want to do things the right way, it gets really expensive, stressful. But it's part of the process. It's not for everyone. It's part of the process. So, um, unfortunately, it did happen. I actually like buying lands in Cape Coast, uh, Central Region, not in Cape Coast, Central Region, because I think like they, their paperwork in terms of land registration is much more efficient, uh, coherent than the one we got in in Accra. So. We just have to find out uh, to make sure we are, you know, we are one of the victims that uh, people got destroyed. Um, but uh, but it's hard. It's hard doing land stuff in Ghana. It's, it's really hard. Um, so that's my piece. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Numbers. Thank you, thank you. The goal, the goal, like I'm saying, we are trying to be the most accomplished. We want to build these homes. We want to build them super well uh, because people need those jobs. You know, we, we're taking care of families. And then once we, some of us get into businesses, it matters, right? So I'm all about elevating us uh, by doing, by showing a little bit of some of the stuff I'm doing. And stuff. So now also too is like I also get the motivation and inspiration from you guys. You know, when I see your project takes off and I get um uh, the energy from that as well. So uh I'm gonna do this thing to the to the best of my ability. Um support the channel, please click all the like buttons, share, 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 please forward the videos um so that people might use it and get some value out of that. So I appreciate you numbers uh joining me here. Yes, you have to do that, you know, because moisture, right? So you have to do that. Even they do it in the U.S., right? So you're going to have moisture in the bathrooms. And so you have to take care of the, the walls, um, the flooring. Uh, you, have to, you have to do that. Make sure there's no leakages and that kind of stuff. Um, so you, you, that's where, the, you know, there's certain things you have to be on the ground. You have to pay attention. The concrete mixture is rich. You know, if it's tile work, make sure it's sealed. They've done a good job. And I've said this, and I continue to say this. In spite of how you build your house, you will never know how everything is going to work to the first six months when you live in it. And you're running everything. Because ideally, you're going to have some leakage somehow. So you're going to be running everything. You're going to waste some water for testing. You're going to run everything for a couple of days, not continuously for a couple of days. And you are checking everything. You're checking room to room. You're checking outside the house. You're checking the walls um, because pipes do crack. Things, glues are not, you know, things are not tight and things happen. So you do all those things so you can remedy, um, you know, those things. So, but if you're detail, um, you know, you can you can catch these things, um, you know, sooner. And so, yes, um, the application, what application is good. Um, and I'll say that it's good because if, for example, if the tiling work is not done well, you have a backup, which will be the waterproof system behind the tiles, right? Um, so I would say it's needed for, for most people.
if you've done your house without damp proof, you can still go and do damp proof now. Okay. So you can go and still do, you can excavate around the foundation, maybe one foot and do it uh, inside and outside. If you're having water issue, um, sometimes the water is coming from up, right? But then also the challenge sometimes like the paint, right? So finding the right paint again and uh, repainting the house can be challenged. Can be a challenge because you painted the house five years ago. Now you go get a new paint and it, it might show, right? So I would say that do it at a time you are, you are trying to do a new paint job. Um, then you you do it um, and then you change the paint, you know, and stuff like that. So you can still do. Obviously, you couldn't do it in the foundation, but you can do extend out maybe one foot down and then um, go about three feet inside. Um, and stuff like that. So you can you can do that. I did it. The Kaswa house, uh, I did my damp proof after I started seeing some issues, right? Um, so but this one, I learned my lesson. So I did it um, in, the, in the foundation. So it can be done. So what do you mean for people's document? I'm sure they do have backup. So they say they do have backup, you know? They say they do have backup. That's what they said. I'm hoping they have backup, right? 20, 2022. I'm hoping they have backup. But the, the fundamental thing is that it should not be stored on the ground. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't I don't know why, you know. But all right, okay. Yeah, I think I answered this question, Martin. Right? So, yeah, so you, you you can you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you have copies of documents, so usually keep a doc. Uh, your, when you, I always tell people this: always have copies of a document. You know, in, um, so when you get a full packet, make copies of all of them, sign it, have a physical copy, have an electronic copy, on a drive somewhere. These are these these are important document. Uh, cause you may have to resubmit it again, right? For whatever that thing is. So always have, have that, um, um, it's very, very important. So have copies that, um, you can, um, access anywhere in the world. And they also have physical copies. Everybody should have a safe, waterproof safe, fireproof safe somewhere. Even if you have, you know, you, you can get some safe in Ghana that you can put some of these documents in there, right? Make sure you put like, um, Moisture absorbing chemical or something in there um, because it does it does get humid. Okay. All right. Don't go cheap. Spend the money, like a brother said. And I said yes. Do it right. Um, it's like it's important. It's really really important, right? It's really, really important. So let's let's do that. Cost a little bit. Cost a little bit more, but it's worth it. It's really it's really really worth it. Um. You know stuff like that. So because the flooding, you may not have control. It's coming from somewhere else, and and it's coming to the house. You really, um, you really can't do anything sometimes, right? So so just take care of that, um, and then we good. All right. So keep building. Uh, be smart. You know, um, I'm working. I'm building. Uh, I'm building all the time. At a certain point, I'm gonna take a break. Um. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, salt, salt can be a problem. Um. So usually, you you so they have some chemicals for that. But you, the best thing is like when you do the testing. Uh, I know some place in Prom Prom really, really notorious for that. Um, because it used to be a salt deposit back in the days. And so usually when you, like I said, when you test it, depending on the concentration level, you may have to just build on, build like a steel, st steel home. So high elevation on pillars, and then you treat the pillars, right? So you're just dealing with the pillars. So the whole foundation of the house is not sitting on the on the ground. Salt is very notorious. You would chew everything. It will eventually start corroding. You know, Rode in the metal, the iron bars and stuff like that in, in there. 
And so they have some chemicals that you can, you know, you can apply on the outside. Sometimes when we do all this tile work, so that basically a tile work is not mitigating the problem, it's just hiding the problem, right? So we do all the stonework now. It's still the moisture is still behind the stonework. Um, so it's you know, we treat it and then and then um, you know, we do that. So there are there are some some chemicals that we can we can do. Um, now, if you have, let's say, if you have a borehole, a reverse osmosis, then you can that also help. If so, you're pulling all the moisture, and then removing all the salt, right? And over time, as it rains, it's going to dilute the content. So um, that's another way you can you can get it out. But uh, we should all test for salt. So it's, it's very important. Okay, so it's very important, and so that is why you know I, I'm I'm an advocate. Like, you see a line you buy, no, don't do that. Get some information, the history, what goes down there, and stuff like that, because um, it matters. Okay, so you know. So do this. Yeah, so do that. So the reverse osmosis. So your regular filtration mine is not going to remove the salt. Your reverse osmosis is going to remove the sodium chloride, you know, which is salt, you know, from the system. And it's going to pump it, um, you know, wherever you channel it to be. Um, so you may you may need to, may to, you know, look at that. I've also seen sometimes people actually start displacing the soil. So they'll move a bunch of the soil out and then they'll bring fresh soil, right, to, to mitigate uh, what is out there. So I've seen that. But that also can be sometimes not, you know, possible, right, to bring the vehicle in and dump new latrite or something like that in there. Um, as you move, maybe you dig, you dig about, uh, you know, two feet by two feet trenches around, uh, you know, the building, and then you fill it up with um, new soil that does not contain salt. I have seen that as well. So that is one thing One thing that it could help too. And also another thing you could do too, you could build, uh, you could build something like uh, channels that basically when it rains, right, because salt is going to dissolve into solution, right? So when it rains, it pulls, so you do PVC pipes and it pulls it out. You know, so you are draining, you are removing the saturation out of the salt out uh, by using the rainwater as it rains to to reduce the content, right? Yeah. So so there's a there's a there's a few things you can look at. It. So copies of the flooded uh, Delena document. Oh, copies means what I mean by they make copies is they have electronic copies. Um, that's what it's saying. They have electronic copies, not paper copies so i will still have electronic copies that's what they said so we'll see how we'll see how that goes it's unfortunate but um you know it's just one of those things um that we gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta put out with that right and so just follow through double check because and i think if you if you have some land document i think you should call uh, you should call because if you need to submit another one in, you can do it now. Don't take, uh, don't have the mindset that it's not my document. I think because even though mine is at the closing stage, I don't know how they're storing them. So I don't know. Uh, so I'm still following up on that as well. So I think people need to, you know, check. And uh, if you need to read some stuff, uh, they might tell you to pay again. Uh, this is wild. But anyway, other than that, uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, enjoy the process, even though it's frustrating something. Um, enjoy it. Um, you know, find people that are doing this thing, trying to do it right, uh, pick their brains, you know. Do some research, uh, build something you will enjoy, build for you. Uh, build with all the things that could happen in the future. Um, 
in, in there. So, um, and then after that, just um, just go and just go and enjoy it uh, because I plan to, uh, and I do enjoy the casseroles. Uh, this time when I go, I'm going to do a little bit video. I don't think I've actually done a video about the house. Uh, people have been requesting that, so we're gonna do something a little bit just to you know give you some few ideas uh, and stuff like that. But um, I am maximizing the opportunity uh, to do things better, you know, um, this time around. Yes, yes, Coomprint. Yep, it says um, I always tell people. Uh, take your time. Take your time. Um, do it right. Uh, do the street. Do everything right. Um, even that means he ex, you know, he extend the project to a year. It matters. It matters. Um, you know, containers. I think I've answered this uh, question in the past as well. Um, the thing with the containers is most people are using the shipping containers. I know there's a few companies in Ghana that are making them from scratch. Uh, but the shipping containers have chemicals in them. Highly, highly toxic. It's not designed for human habitation. This is a report from the UN. Um, and so before it can even be used, it has to be treated very, very well, and then you have to put insulation and all that stuff. And so um, that is a problem with that. But I think even with the flooding, like I said, once the, the things that I've discussed, you you will be, I mean, after all that, if your house flood, then I mean, the whole country is submerged under the water. So there's a bunch of stuff you could do. Uh, the container building might be cheaper um and stuff like that so but the composition of the metal that's what i'm worried about you know even if they are making it are they treating it well because i deal with chemicals all the time so you know in california shout out to california uh they always updated on on, on toxicity and some of these things are real you know organ failures you know carcinogenic in a bunch of stuff, lung issues. Um, so I work with that every day. So I'm very sensitive to to that kind of stuff. So that's more issue with the with the container and what kind of chemical they are using to prevent the corrosion. Right, that is that. If you can get that, um, then you know you can you can be creative with that as well, uh, but still elevated. Probably has to be bolted down, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So, and fireproofing, you know, it's metal, right? It's metal. So, fireproofing, right? Metal is going to conduct. So, and all those things. So, you have to factor all, all those things in, in there. Usually, what they would do is they would put a fire retar uh, uh, retardant in there in the form of either the paint or the insulation and that kind of stuff. So, it's a bunch of few things that you have to make sure it's being done. Yes, okay, you know, Kumsi is it's expensive. I think, what is it, uh, way, 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 way down the road, I think somebody was trying to buy like a 40-footer from the Tema Harbor, and I think they wanted like 15,000 cities or 20,000 cities or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's it's just that for now, I'm still, I'm still advocating breaking mortar. Uh, there's different style people are building in different parts of the world. It's still, still, the thing is, when it gets to Ghana, is the technical skill execution still lacking, still lacking, um, and stuff like that. So, you know, someday maybe we'll get there, um, and stuff like that. So, I'm thinking, but for now, brick and mortar uh, still has, um, has a relevancy, and you can, you just gotta be creative and know what you're doing, and you can just, you know, build it to mitigate. Again, some of these challenges that uh, you know we are facing, um, you know, stuff like that. So, okay, thank you, everyone. Please click the like button and don't forget uh, to share. <laughs> it is a, <laughs> you know, your people, right? 
Um, so, um, so don't forget to share, please. I, you know, uh, thanks for joining me. I wish you a great weekend. We'll meet again in two weeks. Um, and then, so I'm doing every other, every other week now. But in the meantime, if you have questions, then you can reach out to me. We have a website. Take a look at our website, right? Uh, we have some products and services that you can use to enhance, uh, to make things better for you. We don't have to be victims on anything. Uh, there's solution for everything, right? So we just have to go outside the box. Uh, okay? So it's, it's, to me, it's that important. So I uh, thank you. I appreciate you, um, you know, joining me here. I don't take it for granted. You know, we'll talk again. Um, and then uh, keep believing, keep building. It's worth it. And then, uh, you know, let's live this life to the best of our abilities. Okay? All right. Uh, thank you. Have a great weekend.